Welcome to The Extra Dimension, the show where we explore ways technology intersects with other parts of our lives, which we like to call the technological convergence. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I am going to talk about how to listen to podcasts. Find the show notes for this episode of The Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED49. So here we are at the end of 2019, and despite the fact that I have seen many, many thought pieces written about how podcasts have made it big, we've uh, hit the mainstream, everybody knows what a podcast is, I still hear a lot of people when I tell them that I have a podcast, they, they ask, you know, what exactly is a podcast? How do I listen to a podcast? And you know, that's okay. Like back in 2011, when my friend Ryan started this little podcast network called The Nexus TV, the first thing that I said to him was, what the heck is a podcast? Uh, And look where we are now. So what are we going to be covering in this episode? The beginning of the episode will serve as a little explanation of how podcasts are published and what that means for the ways that you can listen to podcasts. There are a lot of different ways to listen to them. Um, and so, yes, this this episode is going to kind of be the podcast version of like a VHS tape that gets shipped with a VCR explaining how to set up that VCR. It's pretty meta. Uh, but then we will talk about some of the features that you would want to look for if you're choosing which podcast player to use to listen to podcasts. So that section of the episode will serve as a companion to the review that I am also releasing on the same day. Uh, We are reviewing a whole bunch of different podcast players, and that's happening over on our reviews show, Second Opinion. So if you want to listen to that review uh, and figure out which podcast player is best for you after listening to this episode, uh, feel free to go over to thenexus.tv slash SO79 to find that episode. So the first thing that we need to understand is how are podcasts structured? How does this industry work? And, uh, and how are they published? So podcasts are simply a series of mp3 files that are organized together in an RSS feed. So this is kind of like a blog, but in audio form. Um, now, Think of this in contrast to like a centralized uh, model such as YouTube, right, where every single video that you might want to watch uh, is hosted on YouTube's platform. You have to visit either their website or their app in order to watch them. But in the case of like uh, blogs or uh, podcasts, you can use any platform that you want to consume that content uh, because it's all published in a like freely available format. So despite the fact that there are many, many different websites, different hosting platforms that a podcaster might put their content on, um, you will be able to listen to any of those podcasts in any of the podcast players that you want to use. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about decentralized publishing versus centralized publishing models, uh, we covered that extensively in the Extra Dimension number 33. So you can go and listen to that uh, at thenexus.tv slash TED33. Another fun thing to note is that it is impossible for DRM to be implemented using the podcast publishing model, uh, and I consider that to be uh, an amazing and wonderful thing uh, because it means that as long as, as long as this industry stays the course and continues to use our current decentralized publishing model, then uh, you will always be able to download all of the episodes and, uh, that you could possibly want and do whatever you want with them. Uh, we covered digital rights management, DRM, uh, in the extra dimension number 27. So go and listen to that at the nexus.tv slash TED 27 if you want to learn more. So that was a lot of 
insider baseball uh, about the podcast publishing platforms. But uh, what does this mean for you, the listener? So this means that there are a lot of different ways that you can listen to podcasts. Uh, The most straightforward way to listen to like a single episode of a podcast would be probably through your browser. Um, You've probably done this if somebody like posted a link to a podcast episode on social media, right? What happens when you click on that link? Well, it takes you to the website. Um, And then there's probably a player embedded in that website. You just click play, you listen to the episode. Awesome. Now, what happens if you are really interested in that particular show and you want to listen to other episodes from that show as they come out? Um, You'll want to use some sort of service that will keep track of all of the new episodes for you. Um, So you could use a traditional RSS reader because, as I mentioned earlier, every podcast is just a series of MP3 files that are held together in an RSS feed. So you could just use a traditional RSS reader and uh, play the MP3 files that are embedded there uh, in each RSS feed item. But if you don't have time to listen to the episode right then and there, uh, you can always download the MP3 file and uh, move it around to different devices, listen to it wherever and whenever you want. Um, You can do that either from the website, right, or from the RSS feed, whichever one works best. Um, And if you combine those last two concepts, if you combine uh, the RSS reader with downloading an mp3 file then you get what apple started doing with itunes back in 2005 that was when they introduced podcasts as a category in the uh in the itunes store and so what you would do is using the desktop interface keep in mind 2005 this was before the iphone this was before the iPod Touch, right? This was back in the days when uh, I think the iPods didn't even have Wi-Fi capabilities, right? So um, in order to get these podcast episodes onto your mobile device that you carried with you uh, for listening to stuff, what you would do is you would go into iTunes on your desktop um, and you would choose shows to subscribe to, um, either ones that are listed in their directory or by pasting in the RSS feed. Uh, And then that program on your computer would then automatically uh, download new episodes and synchronize them to your iPod when you plugged it into your desktop. Um, And I'm pretty sure that this is that that's kind of where the term podcast came from, right? Because you were listening to it on your iPod usually. Now, this kind of thing, of course, was possible with just about any kind of MP3 player that you could uh, imagine, but uh, Apple really streamlined the process for their users. Now, today in 2019, we've uh, we've come a little ways. The best way to manage all of the different shows that you listen to um, is probably by using a podcast player on your smartphone. Um, It's an app. It will periodically check all of the different feeds for all of the different shows that you're interested in. Uh, It can download new episodes automatically based on settings, right? You can choose to download episodes from some shows and not from others. You can choose to download episodes uh, over Wi-Fi only or using your cellular connection, all kinds of different settings. Um, And then it'll let you play all of those episodes all from one app. Now, because of the decentralized nature of all of this, there are many, many different podcast players available out there. So, how are you going to choose which one is right for you? Uh, So, this is the part where we're going to take a deep dive into a whole bunch of different features that you might look for in a podcast player, and I'm going to explain what I mean when I talk about each one of those features. Uh, And then armed with that information, you'll be able to determine which features are most important to you, and uh, you can listen to Second Opinion number 80 to figure out which podcast player has the features that you are looking for. All right, so first of all, there are a few features that I consider to be absolutely essential in a podcast player. If a particular podcast player does not have all of these features, these absolute essentials, I cannot in good conscience 
recommend that player to somebody. The first essential is that it must be available on all of the platforms that somebody cares about, and it should synchronize your episode progress between them. I'm somebody who uses a variety of different types of devices, so uh, I'm always looking for uh, services that are available on a lot of different platforms, and I even keep an eye on the platforms that I don't use on a regular basis because uh, I don't want to get pigeonholed into a particular ecosystem, a particular um, operating system, just because I chose to use services that are not available on another operating system. The second essential is uh, it should have a directory of shows. One of the most difficult things that I hear from people who do not yet listen to a lot of podcasts is they don't know how to find podcasts that they're going to be interested in. Um, So if the app that you're using has a directory that you can browse through, that you can find shows, you know, sort them by different categories, um, stuff like that, then that job will be made much, much easier. Uh, Now, I think that the best approach that a podcast player can take is for them to seed this uh, directory of shows from Apple Podcasts, Apple maintains the largest directory of podcasts that uh, exists in the world, and also Apple does a lot of work to kind of, you know, shape the industry and move it forward in certain ways, and... While I understand that we don't want all of the power to be concentrated with one entity, you know, we, do, we don't want Apple to be able to unilaterally make decisions for the entire industry. If we have a world where there are many, many different podcast players and all of them are uh, building their list, of, their directory lists in different ways, then uh, it becomes very complicated for the podcasters themselves, the creators, to keep track of this entire uh, ecosystem and to like submit their shows to every single one of these uh, different podcast players. For example, I had no idea what kinds of different uh, podcast players there were out there and what I needed to do to get the extra dimension listed in all of them until I personally started going and doing the research for our second opinion uh, podcast player roundup. And I was testing each one of these apps and, you know, through that I was able to figure out which ones had our shows and which ones didn't and how I could submit my shows to those platforms. But not everybody is going to go through all of that effort. The third essential feature is that uh, a podcast player must be able to take in arbitrary RSS feeds. This is so incredibly important, and this is where many podcast players fail. If you're using a podcast player that cannot take an arbitrary RSS feed, so by that I mean you should be able to go to a podcast's website, find a link to their RSS feed, copy that link, paste it into your RSS uh, player somewhere, and then it will be able to uh, show you all of the episodes from that show. If you're using a podcast player where this is not possible, then that means that you will always be missing out on some of the shows that you could be listening to. Um, For one thing, it's just impossible for podcast creators to keep track of all of these different uh, podcast players and to submit their shows to every single one of them. I'm sure that there are some that even I missed. But also, there are some shows that will never be listed in these podcast players intentionally, right? It's very, very common for um, creators who are using like Patreon, for example. They might have a podcast feed that is an exclusive perk for their patrons, right? And so then um, they wouldn't want to list that show on the Apple podcast directory for example Um, but you can once you you know pay them money you can copy the rss link for for that uh, show for that secret exclusive podcast feed and you can paste that into your uh, podcast player and then you can listen to all those episodes 
The comparison that I always make is if you're using a podcast player that can only play shows that are listed in their directory, it's basically like using an internet browser that could only visit websites that the creator of that browser has heard of, right? That they have listed in their own directory. Um, and that's ridiculous. You would never do that. And the final essential feature uh, in a podcast player is it must be able to automatically download new episodes from the shows that you want it to. Um, I consider that this is an essential, especially if you are using a device that does not have a cellular data connection or if you pay per megabyte on your cell connection. Ideally, you can set this on a show-by-show -show basis because I'm sure that there are some shows that you want to like keep track of the new episodes of, but you don't. Um, you you want to be able to check out like the description of the episode before you decide to download it. Um, also, ideally, you can set this to happen only on Wi-Fi, like I said before, if you're like paying per megabyte on your cell connection. Um, and then also, ideally, it should be able to add new episodes to your queue, right? And that's not going to be available on every single podcast player because not all of them have like the same concept of like an up next queue. Um, so we'll definitely, I'll make a note of that whenever I'm uh, talking about this feature uh, on the second opinion episode. All right, let's talk about some optional features. These are features that I don't consider to be like make or break issues, um, but they are things that I'm sure you will probably appreciate if your podcast player does it. Um, so pay attention during this list uh, to figure out which of these features are ones that, uh, that you really care about that resonate with you. Um, and then uh, during the second opinion episode, you will be able to hopefully like kind of filter through all of the many different podcast players that we're reviewing and figure out which ones uh, have the features that you personally really care about and, uh, and that you you are going to choose. First of all, uh, notifications about new episodes. This is real simple, just a push notification on your device that there's a new episode from this show available. Automatically deleting played episodes, it can be very, very useful. Um, this is especially important if you have a phone that does not have a whole lot of storage, um, but you know, even my uh, my Pixel 3 with like 128 gigabytes of storage, I'm not worried about running out of storage there, but it is useful to just like, you know, I don't have to think about going and managing all of the different files that are on my in my podcast player because I know that like, you know, my habit of listening is just like, okay, I've got this queue episodes automatically get downloaded, they get added to this queue, and once I listen to them, they get deleted from the device because I'm probably not going to go back and listen to them anytime soon. The podcast player that you are using should have a reasonably intuitive interface. Now, this is a pretty subjective requirement so i will only bring this up if i find an app that is like really really difficult to use skipping forward and backward through an episode who wants to listen to advertisements i don't have time for them usually um ideally you should be able to customize how many seconds this uh, skipping will send you back or forward. Um, I personally like to set my podcast player to, to go forward by 30 seconds and back by 10 seconds because when I'm skipping forward, I'm usually trying to get through like an advertisement that's usually like 30 seconds or a minute long. Um, and if I'm skipping backwards, I'm usually trying to just like, oh, hear a line that just happened uh, just a moment ago. Variable speed playback. Oh, here's one of my favorite features. So, yeah, podcasts can get pretty darn long, and uh, if you are having trouble getting through all of the different shows that you're subscribed to, uh, you can speed them up a little bit while still being able to understand them. Um, so, for example, if you listen to my voice at 1.7x, uh, it will sound something like this. <laughs> 
Welcome to The Extra Dimension, the show where we explore ways technology intersects with other parts of our lives, which we like to call the technological convergence. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I'm going to talk about how to listen to podcasts. Find the show notes for this episode of The Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED49. All right, back to normal speed. Um, ideally, you should be able to set this on a show-by-show -show basis um, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, some hosts are just easier to understand at high speed than others. Um, and then also, there are some shows like uh, audio dramas, for example, that really rely on like pacing. So you wouldn't want to speed those ones up. Most podcast players that let you speed up shows uh, will also let you slow them down. I have never really used that feature uh, except to give myself a good chuckle by making people sound super drunk by uh, slowing them down to like 0.5x. Um, but uh, yeah, that's usually there. It's usually available to you uh, if you need it. Truncate Silence is another time-saving feature, uh, so this one will save you time by cutting out longer portions of silence. Again, like variable speed playback, you should be able to set this on a show-by-show -show basis, uh, because some shows use silence for pacing. It's also definitely worth noting that this feature is a little bit risky to use because sometimes you may be listening to a show where like one of the hosts uh, is a little bit quieter, maybe they like trail off at the ends of their sentences or something like that, right? And so sometimes you get actual like audio that is getting caught in the truncate silence uh, feature and it removes portions of what they're saying, uh, which can get pretty distracting and make it difficult to uh, follow what they're what they're talking about. Show notes. Oh my goodness, show notes. So audio is a great medium. I love it. But you can't always put everything into the audio portion of a show that you want to. Podcasters rely on the show notes for their episodes to convey a lot of supplemental information such as links images, an episode index with timestamps maybe, transcripts, full transcripts of the episodes, right? Um, it is crucial that the show notes that a podcast creator has attached to their episode, it's crucial that those show notes are displayed as close to the way that the podcaster intended as possible. So this is definitely a feature that I will be paying attention to uh, while we review all of the different podcast players um, because here on the Nexus we put a lot of time and effort into the show notes that go along with each episode so that you the listener can uh, take full advantage of those show notes and get everything out of the episode that you need. MP3 chapters are another quality of life feature that you will really appreciate once you start using it. So what this is, is if a podcast creator has embedded some chapter information into the metadata of the MP3 file that they publish, then some podcast players will be able to display this information. So what is this information for? It's most often used to make it easier for the listener to jump around the episode from like one topic to another. It can also be used to provide different types of like clickable links in different sections of the episode. Um, different images can be displayed at different times uh, during the episode. It's a little bit more of an obscure feature. So if a podcast player supports them, then it's a pretty good litmus test for like the presence of a lot of other features. Similarly, if you find a show that makes use of MP3 chapters, you can be pretty sure that the creator of that show is pretty serious about podcasting as a craft. Not to toot my own horn too much. Google Cast and AirPlay. So sometimes you may want to play your podcasts through the big speakers in your house. Um, Google Cast is uh, the platform that's available on Android, iOS, and the Chrome on desktop. You may know it by the name Chromecast. Um, AirPlay is available on Apple devices. So most media players uh, support 
each of those on the uh, appropriate platforms that they're on, um, but sometimes they don't make it in there, uh, so I'll definitely make sure to mention that if that is an issue. Android Auto and CarPlay. Um, one of the best times to listen to podcasts is honestly while you're traveling. Uh, and so you definitely want to make sure that your podcast player is going to be treated as a first class citizen if you are driving in a car. A quick note about this. It was very, very easy for me to test Android Auto compatibility for all of these different uh, players, at least the ones that are available on Android, um, because I can run Android Auto on my phone without it having to be like hooked up to a fancy car with a fancy display. Um, CarPlay is tougher since it requires both an iPhone and a CarPlay enabled car. I have neither of those things, so uh, I'm not as 100% sure about the CarPlay compatibility of, uh, of some of these podcast players. Streaming episodes. Um, it is nice, even though you could be downloading these episodes and, you know, listening to them offline, it's nice to be able to just listen to an episode without having to wait for the entire file to download sometimes. Um, I will be very surprised if I find any podcast players that don't have this feature. It seems like kind of a no-brainer. Video podcasts. Ooh, here's a weird niche one. So most podcasts are audio only, but occasionally you will find a show that is a collection of MP4 videos organized in an RSS feed. Um, so for example, TED Talks, right? TED does publish all of their videos on their YouTube channel, um, but they, of course, have their own website where they host all these videos as well. Um, and they put all of these videos out on a podcast feed. Um, so some podcast players will let you play these types of video feeds. Ideally, the player will play the video if you have the screen on, and then it will continue playing the audio only if you turn the screen off. Um, though I have seen several different, like, implementations of this kind of thing. Um, I've seen some podcast players that will download the video files, but then will only play the audio from them and will never show you the video. Uh, so I'll definitely be sure to uh, make notes of those when, I, when we encounter that kind of situation. Importing and exporting OPML files. So an OPML file is the industry standard for moving your many, many different shows that you are subscribed to from one podcast player to another. OPML files can only transfer a list of shows that you're subscribed to. It won't transfer your progress in the various different episodes, you know, which ones are played, which ones are unplayed, but it's a heck of a lot better than trying to recreate your list from scratch. Starting episodes at custom times. This is another time-saving feature. So if a particular show has like an intro that is always the same length or if they have like a set number of ads at the beginning of their episodes that always take the same amount of time, then you can safely skip those by having your podcast player start the episodes of that show at a custom time. Um, a related feature is uh, some players will also let you skip like the last X seconds of an episode, um, which would be used if like uh, a show has a consistent length outro. Playing episodes without subscribing to a show. So the podcasting industry is really built around like the whole concept of subscribing, right? The, the assumption is that like you will mostly be listening to episodes of shows that you are subscribed to that you want to hear all of the new episodes from. Um, but occasionally you'll want to listen to an individual episode of a show that you are not subscribed to. So it's really nice if your podcast player will let you do that. sleep timer. Um, I personally can't imagine using podcasts to try to fall asleep, but I know that some people do. And so it's very useful to have settings uh, for like when 
the playback should stop. This is uh, typically you kind of make a choice between like whether this is going to kick in, it'll stop playing uh, after a certain number of episodes have completed um, or based on a certain amount of time. playback widgets on Android. So um, Android lets you add widgets to your home screen, which are really cool tools that let you control the various different apps on your phone in particular ways without having to actually open the app itself. Um, and most media players will give you uh, a playback widget. So like a play pause button, a skip forward, skip backward button. It'll show you like the album art usually. Like I said, most media players make this available, so I'll be very surprised if I find uh, podcast players that don't support this, um, but I'll definitely make a note if they don't. The ability to play local files. So, I've been reiterating several times throughout this episode that a podcast is only a podcast if it is a bunch of audio files that are strung together with a an RSS feed. Um, but sometimes you will end up with like random MP3 files from podcasts or audiobooks or whatever that you may want to play and you know they're not attached to an RSS feed. So it is very nice to be able to play those files in the same app and in the same queue as the rest of your podcast episodes. Um, and so I always look for a, uh, a podcast player that has this feature. visual appeal. So this is another pretty subjective one, um, but uh, yeah, even the most feature-rich app is going to kind of suck to use if it's ugly as sin. So I'll definitely be making a note of like how pretty each app is. Extra features. Hey, we're getting towards the end here. So some podcast players will be exceeding even my expectations and they'll be implementing features that I wasn't expecting. So I will definitely make a note of those uh, in that column uh, if I find those. And finally, other notes. So sometimes there are things that are worth noting about a podcast player that aren't related to any of the previously mentioned features. Um, so things like, you know, when you are sharing an episode, do they uh, link back to the original page for that episode or do they use their own custom link? Um, is there some like weird ownership going on between like, you know, this podcast player is uh, owned by an entity that also publishes podcasts or something like that, you know? Are there any conflicts of interest? Um, I'll be making notes of those kinds of things uh, in that section. All right, thanks for listening to this episode of The Extra Dimension. You should now be all prepared to go and listen to Second Opinion number 79, uh, our podcast players roundup where I am reviewing all of the different podcast players that I could get my hands on uh, and uh, and you'll be have a nice informed perspective on the different features that I'll be talking about over in that episode. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. The Extra Dimension is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any part of this episode uh, as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which, once again, is thenexus.tv slash TED49. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, please go to our subreddit to do that. Uh, and if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. Come back next month for an episode about human-centered design and ethics in software development. And if you have ideas for future topics for The Extra Dimension, feel free to reach out to us uh, with those topics. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.